Hello and welcome to Daily Prelims Practice. Here we are going to take up the MCQs based on today's newspaper of The Hindu and Indian Express, which are important from UPSC Prelims exam perspective. The topics for today's discussion are listed on your screen. So let us start the discussion. The first question of today's discussion is based on this particular news, which has appeared on the text and context page of The Hindu. It basically talks about the IPCC report, which has highlighted the issues with the afforestation policy in India. As we all know, the union government has came up with Kampa Act in 2016 to promote the afforestation in the country. And this policy is contested because it has a provision that the forest can be cut in exchange for the forests to be set up in far away places. As UPSC has previously asked questions on Kampa Act, this area becomes important for our discussion. In the year 2019, UPSC has specifically asked a question on Kampa Act. In this question, you are being given two statements and you need to identify which of the following is or are correct. You can pause this video and try your hand on this. The practice MCQ which we have designed for today's discussion says that with reference to the provisions of Compensatory Afforestation Fund Act 2016, consider the following statements. In this question, you are being given two statements and you need to identify which of the statements given above is or are correct. The first statement says it establishes the National Compensatory Afforestation Fund under the Public Account of India. It is a correct statement as the Kampa Act was enacted by Parliament of India to provide for the utilization of amounts realized in the lieu of forest land diverted for non-forest purpose. And it also establishes the National Compensatory Fund and a State Compensatory Afforestation Fund for each state. So this statement is correct and these funds will be managed and utilized by an authority constituted at national and state levels respectively. The second statement says there shall be a national authority with Prime Minister of India as ex officio chairperson. It is an incorrect statement because the Minister of Environment and Forest is the ex officio chairperson and not the Prime Minister. So this statement becomes incorrect and the answer to this question becomes A which is one only and the answer to the previous year question is also A which is one only because the second statement says people's participation is mandatory in the afforestation programs carried under the act of 2016. So one can eliminate this particular option because such kind of acts does not require people's participation mandatorily. So one can eliminate this particular option and reach the correct answer. Now moving on to the next question which is based on this particular news which has appeared on page number 14 in The Hindu. It basically talks about the Sars crane bird which is also the state bird of Uttar Pradesh. However, the context of this news is not very important from our UPSC prelims exam perspective. But UPSC has previously asked many questions on biodiversity species and their characteristics. So one must be aware about the key characteristics associated with this particular bird and as you can see, in the year 2019, UPSC has asked this particular question in which three different species has been asked and you need to identify out of these three statements, which of them is or are correct. You can solve this question by applying your common sense. Before explaining the previous year question, we will go through the practice MCQ which says that with reference to Sara screen, which of the following statements is or are correct. The first statement says, it is the tallest flying bird in the world. Yes, this statement is correct. It is the tallest flying bird in the world. The second statement says, it is native to Indian subcontinent only. Now, whenever you come across this particular term, you must be very careful with that particular statement as UPSC has a habit of asking statements in this particular fashion. And it is an incorrect statement as the Sara crane is found in Indian subcontinent, Southeast Asia and Northern Australia. So, this statement is incorrect. The last statement says it is listed as critically endangered in the IUCN red list of threatened species. It is again an incorrect statement as SARS crane is listed as vulnerable and not critically endangered. So statement 2 and statement 3 are incorrect. The answer to this question becomes A which is one only. As you can see in all the three statements, the word only is mentioned everywhere. So it becomes difficult to eliminate the options by just removing the statements which includes the word only. Let us try to solve this question. Now the third statement says one horned rhino is naturally found in India. If you are following the newspapers regularly, you must be aware that rhino is found in Nepal and Bhutan also. So this statement is incorrect. 
So if we eliminate third from our options, we are left with only two options. Now many of you must be aware that Asiatic lion is found only in Gujarat, specifically in the Gir forest area. So this statement is correct and the answer to this question becomes A which is one only. Whenever you come across such questions, try to apply your common sense to reach the correct answer. The next question of today's discussion is based on this particular news which has appeared on page number 13 in Indian Express. It basically talks about the lifting of stay on OBC sub quota order for Lingayats and Vokaligas. Now Lingayat is an important sect in southern India which has a historical importance and it becomes important for us to discuss the key aspects related to Lingayat sect. As you can see in the year 2020, UPSC has asked a question regarding the religious history of India. In this question, you are being given three statements and you need to identify which of the following is or are correct. On the similar lines, we have framed one practice MCQ and it says that consider the following statements with reference to the religious history of India. In this question, you need to identify the incorrect statements. The first statement says, Lingayatism emphasis on Adwait Vedant of the 11th century philosopher Ramanuj. It is an incorrect statement as Lingayatism emphasis on qualified monoism, which is also known as Vishishtadvat. So, this statement becomes incorrect. The second statement says, Lingayatism rejects the caste system and authority of Vedas. It is a correct statement as Lingayatism rejects any form of social discrimination which includes the caste system and authority of Vedas. So, this statement is correct. The third statement says, Panchacharya tradition in Lingayatism was developed during the time of Baswana. It is again an incorrect statement because this tradition was developed after the time of Baswa. So, this statement becomes incorrect. The fourth statement says, The scripture of Lingayatism, Baswa Puran, was completed during the reign of Vijayanagar ruler, Krishna Devraya. It is again an incorrect statement because the Baswa Puran was completed in 1369 during the time of Bukharai 1. So this statement is incorrect and the answer to this question becomes D which is 1, 3 and 4 only. Now on the face of it, it seems that this is a tough question but you can still solve it without having in-depth knowledge regarding the Lingayat set. Most of you must be aware that Lingayat rejects the caste system and authority of Vedas. If you are able to identify that the second statement is correct, you can solve this question by simple elimination method. If you eliminate two, you will reach the correct answer, making this question very easy. Whenever you come across such long questions, just try to identify the statement with which you can eliminate all other options and reach the correct answer. So, it is an important learning from this particular MCQ which can help you in your prelims exam. And the answer to the previous year question is B, which is 2 and 3 only. It is more of a factual question and if you are aware about these particular sects, only then you can solve this question. And if you have not heard these particular sects, try to skip such questions in UPSC exam because it can, because you can end up marking the incorrect answer in such questions. So try to restrain yourself whenever you come across such factual questions. Moving on to the next question which is based on this news article which has appeared on page number 10 in The Hindu. It basically talks about the India's push for semiconductors. Semiconductor industry plays an important role in electronics manufacturing. Union government is continuously pushing for production of semiconductors in India and it has been included in the performance linked incentive scheme in which the government is promoting the domestic manufacturing sector. UPSC has previously asked many questions related to new technologies and inventions which are happening across the world. So, this area becomes important for our discussion. And in the year 2015, UPSC has asked a question on near field communication technology. In this question, you have been given three statements and you need to identify which of them is or are correct. You can pause this video and try to solve this question. And on the similar lines, we have framed one practice MCQ which says that with reference to the semiconductor manufacturing in India, consider the following statements. The first statement says, The Semiconductor Complex Limited is a public sector undertaking that manufactures and supplies silicon wafers to Indian semiconductor industry. It is a correct statement as this particular PSU was established in 1983 in Mohali, which is in Punjab, with an aim to promote the semiconductor industry in India. 
and it also provides the technical support and consultancy services to the domestic manufacturers. So this statement is correct. The second statement says India is not completely self-sufficient in semiconductor manufacturing. It is a correct statement as India does not have semiconductor manufacturing base on a commercial scale and it has to import all of the semiconductors outside the country. So both the statements are correct and the answer to this question becomes C which is both 1 and 2. And the answer to the previous year question is C which is 1 and 3 only. The second statement says NFC is designed for use by devices which can be at a distance of even a meter from each other. As the name suggests near field communication. So you should get an idea that it will work for a shorter distance. And on the other hand a meter is a very long distance and this particular technology fails to work at such distance. Hence statement 2 is incorrect. First and third is correct as it uses the electromagnetic radio fields for contactless services. Hence the correct answer is 1 and 3 only. Moving on to the next question which is based on the disqualification of member of parliament and this article has appeared on page number 13 in The Hindu. This particular issue has came up due to the conviction of Rahul Gandhi and his sentencing in 2019 defamation case. The disqualification of MPs is an important area under the polity section. So the disqualification of MPs becomes an important area for our discussion. And UPSC has previously asked questions on disqualification. So one must keep a tap on such news. In 2019, this particular question has been asked by UPSC. And in this, you are being given three statements and you need to identify the correct answer. You can pause this video and try to solve this question as it is an easy question. Try to apply your common sense and you will definitely reach the correct answer. And on the similar lines, we have designed one practice MCQ and it says, consider the following statements. Out of these two statements, you need to identify which of the statements given above is or are correct. The first statement says, all the disqualification criteria for being a member of parliament has been stated in the constitution of India. It is an incorrect statement. The constitution specifies only certain conditions for disqualification as mentioned under the article 102. Rest it delegates the responsibility on parliament to legislate laws guiding further disqualifications. This statement is incorrect. The second statement says state legislature can enact laws to disqualify members for being a member of state legislature. It is again an incorrect statement. Under article 191, it is specifically mentioned a person shall be disqualified for being a member of legislative assembly if he is disqualified on the provisions which are mentioned in the constitution or disqualified under any law made by parliament. So it is the parliament who can make a law and not the state legislature. Hence the answer to this question becomes D as both the statements are incorrect. Now moving on to the previous year question, it can be easily solved by elimination technique. The third statement says the office of profit is well defined in the constitution of India. If you have read the Indian polity properly, you must be aware that the office of profit is not defined in the constitution. The moment you eliminate option three, you will reach the correct answer, which is one and two only. The last question of today's discussion is based on this particular news article which has appeared on page number 8 in The Hindu. It basically talks about the freedom fighters of India who contributed to the national movement and helped India to attain the independence. As the personalities associated with Indian national movement are important from our UPSC prelims exam perspective, this area becomes important for our discussion and we must be aware about the key personalities who have contributed to the national movement. In the year 2022, UPSC has asked a question regarding the freedom fighters who were associated with Gadar party. You can pause this video and try your hand on this. And on the similar lines, we have designed one practice MCQ which says that which of the following freedom fighters worked outside India for Indian independence. Now you are being given four personalities and you need to identify which of them worked outside India for Indian independence. The first one is Thaliyadi Vallemai. She was a Tamil girl who worked with Mahatma Gandhi in South Africa fighting the apartheid regime. So it is a correct option. The second personality is Vanchi Nathan Ayer. He was a freedom fighter but he has not worked outside India. He killed a tax collector named Robert Ash in Madras presidency. It is an incorrect option. The third personality is 
Dr. Chamber Karman Pillai, he worked in Berlin and he formed the International Pro-Indian Committee to gather the support of German people for India's freedom struggle. So, it is also a correct option. The fourth one is very renowned personality and many of you must be aware he has worked outside India to popularize the nationalistic ideas regarding the Indian freedom struggle. He went to London in 1906 and he also founded the Free Indian Society along with Madam Bikaji Kama to propagate his ideas. So it is also a correct option. Now we can solve this MCQ based on elimination technique. We know that the option 2 is incorrect. So if we eliminate option 2, the correct answer to this question becomes C which is 1, 3 and 4 only. And the answer to the previous year question is D which is 3 only. As it was Rash Bihari Bose who was associated with Gadda party and other two personalities were not associated with Gadda party. So that's all for today's discussion. Thank you for watching today's DPP. Stay tuned for the upcoming sessions which will enhance your UPSC prelims exam preparation and gives you an idea regarding the themes and the techniques with which you can solve the MCQs in real-time environment.